everlasting kingdom. Today, I have a very significant lesson. So you need to get your Bible. This lesson is Christ's everlasting kingdom. And the central truth, God works through Christ to establish his kingdom. The focus is to observe God at work in human history to establish Christ's kingdom and live worthy of his kingdom and glory. This lesson is, um, was published at least about 10 years ago by Dr. Whip. He is from Lee University, had his bachelor's degree from there and a master divinity doctor degree. He's a reverend. He earned a, a degree from um, the university in um, Nottingham, England. And you pray with me because it's a very significant lesson in the book of Daniel. Go to Daniel 2. 26 and 45 and 1 Thessalonians 2, 10 and in Hebrews 12. Father, I come right now, I asking you, dear God, to help me to teach this lesson. And I, dear Father, want someone to come to know you through this lesson, for them to repent. For them, dear God, who need to know you better. Father, I'm asking you to reveal and to their God, guide me. Let my words, their God, be coming from you. Father, their God, I want to thank you for this opportunity, their God, because I realize, their God, it's a, it's, a, it's a deep lesson. But I know with your grace and your strength and your guidance, I can do it. So I pray for those who are listening, WOPFM and all on the Radio 99.9 .9 and everyone, I thank you for them joining me right now and who will join later because I know their father that your Holy Spirit is with me and I thank you. I give you the praise in your name. I pray. Amen. Okay, the book of Daniel, it can be intimidating like most people know. And this lesson, like I said, Christ's everlasting kingdom is seven lesson in this. And this is the first session towards it. God's word is given to present a record of God's interaction with his people. I'll give you the points. Okay, interacting always has intimidated the long-term application. God wants us to know him, his love for us, and his will for us. And he has given us his word and spirit to make this possible. Okay? Christian maturity comes through effort, not sin, not um, um, seniority. I'm going to jump around in this lesson. And the, the context of this lesson is Daniel prophecies concerning God's sovereignty over the nation. And you will see in this lesson, it's really for us today, what's going on in Iraq and what's going on in the world, in the churches. I just want you to tag someone or help someone to see this lesson. And thank all you for joining Shirley Ferguson. God bless you. Um, 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 no, this Shelly Banaby, my good friend up in, in, in Canada. I want you to understand this because, anyhow, just, just come along with me. Come along with me. Okay, Daniel prophecy speak to those of his time as well, even for us today, like I said. And Daniel 2 begins with a shift. And like we know, our world is shifting. In the biblical perspective, God designed for his world. Listen now, this world. Okay, God designed for the world histories to be revealed in more details than in previous writing. Now, we know something about in Daniel chapter 7. There's some things in Daniel 7 I'm not going to go into. But Gentiles will rise in power. I'm skipping through. I'm going through. Okay, let's get to Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel 2 and 26 through 35. You can read those chapters. Because I only have half an hour to do this and I'm going to try and do it. To the best of my ability. Nebuchadnezzar, okay, he was king over called Babylonian, Babylonian, okay, which is known today as um Iraq and Baghdad. One of the most distinguished and impressive cities during this that era, or even right now. Okay, the, the Cladinians were noted for trying to prevent evil and promote good. According to Diarius, the Denarius of Sicily, okay? Ironically, in a kingdom noted for his ability to interpret dreams, the king had dreamed that troubled him to the point of preventing sleep. Now, some of us, listen, now you're going to have to see the similes 
and all of the different um, 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 correlations in our world today, in our church, in your life, and what's going on. You're going to have to discern this and what God is saying to you. He called for the Egyptians and all of the astrologies and uh, all of the people who does the um, interpretation of dreams and stuff. They were eager to interpret the dream, but the king demanded they tell him the dream under interpretation. Jumping down now, Daniel, whose name means God is my judge. That's, John, that's the meaning of his name. Asked the king for a chance to interpret the dream. He shared the situation with the companions and they prayed for mercies from God of heaven. Again, like I said, I'm reading in Daniel. Go to Daniel. Okay. This is tremendous principle for the modern church. In day today, we need to know exactly what God is saying to meet the needs for expecting nothing in the church, but the community of people seeking and serving God together. We need to know what God is saying. When one receive what one receive for God benefits the entire community, benefit everybody what we receive. Okay. Going now down, Daniel spoke with confidence and authority to the king because he had heard from God. You know, when you hear from God, and I don't want to do no other interpretation, I want to stick with this. We speak authoritatively on the basic of our ability. We can, however, speak boldly to a world in need, and we have spent time with God and giving him freedom to intervene in our lives. Okay, and remember that. I'm jumping down to this. Human ability never sufficiently answer the question of the heart. Human ability reaches above an understanding and the meaning, but we can only reach so far. When God comes down, breaks through the barriers of the inability, revelation takes place. Now, don't forget, I'm reading from the, the, the Sunday school lesson commentary, and the lesson, this lesson was written by Dr. Witt, like I said, and so I'm, a lot of this stuff give credit to him. Okay, I'm trying to stick with what he is saying and then with the Bible. See the Bible? All of these have scriptures. I'll bring the scriptures because when God gave me this lesson, it was like, okay, God, I'm going to try and do my best because I realize it's so much related to this. I have to put in, but I don't have the time. Okay, God revelation certainly benefit us, but it always serves his purpose. Knowledge without application is impressive, but ineffective. God's ability emphasized. This is in verse 28 and 35, Daniel 2 and 31. Read that on 35. In this speech to Nebuchadnezzar, twice, 99.9, .9, my local community, listen, twice, Daniel emphasized that some things are mysterious. And we can see that today in our lives. It's mysterious. It's secret. Okay? Daniel believed in God who is intimately connected with humanity, not one who is far above and unconcerned with the human plight, plot, okay? God revealed the mysteries that we might know more about him and utilize that the knowledge of his purpose and glory. While we should not lose sight of God's sovereignty, we must not lose sight of his unfallible love for us and his desire to interact with us. Anything that brings glory to God benefit us. We must not, however, forget that his glory is always primary to our benefits. I'm jumping down and jumping through. And remember, like I said, the focus, um, we're getting into um, Daniel prophecies and observe God at work in human history to establish Christ's kingdom and live worthy of his kingdom and his glory. Daniel makes clear to the king that the sources of the revelation is God. We need to know our source is God. It's God. Let's get into the God, he said. Daniel have some points here. He said, he said, God has chosen to make these mystery known to the king. This serves three, he has three important purpose. God is lifted up. Okay? He should be informed. He told Nebuchadnezzar that God has chosen to use him in his plan for humanity. Okay? This communicates to the king that you're very wise and used by God. And you should know God is calling some of us to be used by him. No matter what position you in, king or queen, whatever. Daniel is not, tra I'm trapped. He he's not trapped. And, 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 and he understood very clearly. 
you know, using wisdom, not everything in the role of the event, just like in, in Joseph, they have some Joseph chapter in Genesis 41. Uh, you know, Daniel, the events of the dream, he's, he's being very carefully how we interpret and what God is saying to him. And, and, and I'll put this in, and we could all talk from my experience. We have to be careful how we share our dream, how we share our vision, what God is saying to you, who it's for. Okay, it will come to pass in the latter days. We in the latter days now. The phrase is used in the scripture to indicate a coming dramatic shift. Remember, I talked about a shift again. This is a shifting time. We're in 2020, we're going to 22. There's some shifting coming in the world. And we got to know, how do we apply the Bible? How are we applying this, what I'm saying in Daniel? How are you applying this to what's going on there? How are you interpreting it? Okay, you need to listen. The Old Testament, New Testament, we have to know what God is saying. And the old is for us to reveal in the new. And we got to know it's for us today. Okay, shift in experience and thus the course of history. This is history. Okay, the question is naturally arising. Why will God choose to reveal such an important dream to a pagan king? First, God is sovereign, and God can use whomever. And whoever. He chooses to use a donkey. He, he revealed his will to whoever. Okay, this is God we're talking about. He can use you, he can use me, whatever. Second, a dream given, interpret for a foreign prophet. See, Daniel was a foreign prophet. Okay? would not have been readily accepted in Babylon, okay, back then. And we know today, in some of our places we go, everybody's not accepted. Like I said, interpret, get you an interpretation. To get everyone attention, listen, sometimes God will use a person, you know, who's not known throughout the line. Somebody, you will be the least significant person. And God will use you to tear up a nation. Get ready, get ready, get ready, I'm telling you. This lesson is a great lesson. I, I studied it twice to get the full understanding because what I always said, what are you saying to me? How are you going to use me? How can I apply this to me? What do I see? What do I feel? You know, how, how can I dissect and, and, and get everything of this and get my understanding before I even teach it to you? I already got what God was saying to me. I want you to get what God is saying to you in this. Go in Daniel 2, 4 through 7 and 28. Which is Arabic, uh, uh, Aramaic, okay? The language, and this is deep. God communicate to his audience. This also serves as a reminder to the modern church, that's us, that it is not for, it's not all about us, okay? It is about God and his wills, his plan, and his love for humanity. God so loves us. John 3 and 16, you all know that. Even those who consider pagan, even the foreigners, all the Haitian, Jamaican, all the Caribbean, the Africans, the Ukraine, the Asian, the American, God love us all, no matter what culture we are. Come on now. Even those who consider, we, 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 we don't want to put, we try to put their culture out of our mind, but God loves them. No one is outside God bounds of love. Okay, go to Romans 5 and 8. And, and, and like I said, John 3 and 16, follow God's example. We must learn to communicate the sacred message in a way that is present in our culture where everybody can understand and receive it. And that's what Dr. Um, uh, um, Billy Graham did. He, he was very simple. This is why so many people the Lord revealed to me, God saved on this ministry. And many people came in and said, we have to make the message of God plan simple for everybody in that audience could understand it. God is active in this world, Okay. And he expects us to be like him. Daniel tells the king dream. He, you know, he, he, tell, he, he tells the king the dream is prophetic. Okay? Revealing events that will affect all humanity. If God used you prophetically, whoever listened, Shirley, whoever listened, all of y'all who can listen to you, you have to understand. You have to be used by God. And if God going to use you, be used by him. Okay? Allow him. Let him have his way. And begin to unfold the context of the dream. Okay? In the language God gives you. What follow is to listen carefully. The king saw a large, powerful statue. Okay? I got to go with this. Shining, brightly, frightening, awesome. He was, you know, he was scared. This image composed four mantles, uh, medals, okay? Gold, silver, bronze, and iron. This was very interesting. And they mixed them with clay. You all know the scripture where God took us and he made, you know, let the porter, the porter took the clay. Come on, go to that scripture and try to compare the comparison. Each less value than the one before it. Less value than the one before it. Listen, the movement is also from the strong and brilliant head to weak and common feet of foundation. Supernatural stone cut into hands and everything. Get into a destroyed image. But the components, listen, the components of the statue are scattered into small pieces into the vast. Okay, trashling, come on. Floor and blow away in the wind. 
Okay, so you have to understand what is God saying. How can I interpret this? The stone become a great mountain that fills the entire earth. In Isaiah, go in Isaiah 2, 3, and uh, in Isaiah 11, for a type of symbolics. Okay, the imagery is vivid, powerful, unimportant. Get into the lesson. Rise and fall of the kingdom in Daniel 2 and 36. Read that, please, to really understand this lesson. The pro we means Daniel and God. Daniel is with God. He's connected with God. He has his royalty. God is speaking to him. Daniel with God. And down in here, this is say why we are um, Daniel includes of his friends, our friends, and joining in prayer. Get let's get in prayer. Daniel did that. The king does not interpret dreams. Okay, the king, the king does not interpret Daniel. Okay, not excuse me. The king does not interrupt Daniel. Okay. He allowed Daniel to give him the, the dream. This is King Nebuchadnezzar now. This confirmed that Daniel was a prophet of God and trustworthy. When we go to people, people need to know that we're trustworthy and they can, 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 can have confidence in us in God's word. That's why we need to be genuine. We need to be real. We need to be honest. We need to be sincere. The king convinced that God had a message for him. People want to know, is this message for me? Is this message for you? You have to have confidence in me and believe you in me. I study this God giving this lesson. He's speaking to you right now and he wants you to know we must live and operate in such a way as to be an example of Christ to our righteous living. Yet, be transparent enough that people see Christ and not us. Oh my God, that was very confirmed. Listen, four earthly kingdoms. Go in Daniel 37 and 43. You read that. Okay, I'm going on to this. Like I said, I give credit to this doctor because like I said, at the time, God always have things. He, 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 he four right things for us in this generation. And we need to know what was written 1920 for you what was written you know 2000 for you what was written you have to know and i know this was written for me because i know the fact is what god is doing in my life and the power of god me i need something to let you know that you need god and you need to see some prophetic things that's already been written because this is the word of god is relevant for everybody and we need to teach it we need to teach it god said we need to let the world know utilize that god is using daniel he can use you too Reassure the king that Daniel is not a threat to his power. That's nothing God was showing me. Don't let no one feel like you attracted to their power. You have your power. They have their power. This one have their power. We all have our personal power, but God is the main power. God showed me that. We got to understand. God give each of us our own portion. Our blessing for God know. God knows who he is. And he know who we are. Where, where is he? And that he has a purpose for him in divine kingdom. We all get our purpose in this divine kingdom. We have our territories to work. We have our little, oh my God. He reminded Nebuchadnezzar that what he has or will achieve is because the God of heaven has made it possible. Now, each and every one of us who listening, everything you do. Everything you have. God made it possible. So don't think it's of hum 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 humble yourself, he said, and position yourself. For it should be noticed that he is the king. Okay? Daniel knew who he was, and he's getting, and Nebuchadnezzar got to know who he was. Okay? This is temporal. These, okay, let me see. Historically, because he was dealing with them. He was dealing with the point of God historically, the economy, and other kings, and you know, the political part. He has been placed in the category as king, but we have to know there's the king of kings, the king of kings. Everybody have their position. Who is the prime minister? Who is the king? Who is the governor? Who is this? That's your position, but we have to know who God is, and, and God has a purpose for this, okay? Like Nebuchadnezzar, we must utilize and sharpen all our abilities and talents to allow God to enhance them through his spirit, not our spirit and not our will and not what we want and use them for his glory and his purpose for all kingdoms. Okay. For all kingdoms, power, strength, and glory are his and his alone to impart as determined. That's in 1 Chronicles 29, 11 and Psalms 144. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar informed that he is, okay, he's the head of gold. He, his statues, head and gold and all this. Under God, authority and plan. Yes, dominion over through. I got to hurry up. It is also reminded of Nebuchadnezzar, although he was a conquered kingdom and will be used by God to bring judgment on the earth. Listen, he is the instrument of God. Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. The tendency of many is the church is not to confuse 
person effectiveness and righteousness and approval of God. Many leaders must assume that the, the ability given is to conduct ministry is their own. Okay, I'm going to skip to it because you all know what's going on. Daniel briefly mentioned the next two kings of silver and bronze, okay? And the statue which shall be ruled over the earth and all of that. But listen, the fourth king, these are different kings now. The fourth king and kingdom made of iron. The iron had great military and values and abundance and strength. Think, like I said, you need to use your imagination and think, now use your brain. In many ways, he get this way. Daniel does not mention how that this kingdom is inferior to iron was not valuable as gold. Where the Nebuchadnezzar and other king, anyhow, go on, go on. Okay, interestingly, I'm going to skip to some of that. Interestingly, to be compared, okay. Because they talk about the weakness and their different things and humanity and stuff. Okay, Christ enduring kingdom, Daniel 2, 44 and 45. Read that. Christ enduring kingdom. Daniel get to the heart of Nebuchadnezzar's vision from God. Listen, the primary focus is not on the previous kingdom, but the one yet to come be firmly and permanently established. Okay? This significant, okay? Or uh, this signifies that the hand of God is actively involved in and directing the course of Israel and the human history. Let's think of our history. Let's think of Israel and Iraq and all these things going on in our world today. The other kingdoms are temporarily, okay, permitted, powered by, and subject to God, but have necessar necessities, okay? Necessary. But they have necessarily um, limit place in the political, economic, God's power and stuff in the earth and the spiritual um, um, realm. We need to go. God will all allow stones, that's Christ, to crush all opposing kingdom. Okay? God is in control, like I said. Don't forget what I said. The topic is what we are talking about. What did I say we are talking about? Let me go back to remind you of Christ's everlasting kingdom. Triumph of Christ's kingdom. Okay? Daniel and Revelation. I'm going to be talking about this. Through, 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 through. Throughout the rest of the years, the Lord lead because it's five more chapters. God works through Christ to establish his kingdom. Okay, Daniel, prophecy concerning God's sovereignty over the nation. We talk about our nation. We need to know what's going on so that his will will be done and may be established over the earth. God's kingdom will be established in hearts, but it will not be confirmed to our hearts. God's kingdom is his rule. And reign over all reigns of creation. God is in control of everything, everybody. Okay, just remember that. Okay, I'm, I'm jumping now because my guest is here. Okay, listen. Be worthy. Worthy of kingdoms. That's test. First Thessalonians 2. Go to that. 2 to 10. You have to study this on your own. Human kingdoms are built by forcing, submission. Submission to their goals and I'm ambitions okay god calls all listen all to be a part of his kingdom all but it is our decision to heed that call his model is found in gospel go to the gospel go to the, to the new testament an example of christ he called and many followed some choose not to follow some choose to oppose him he perfectly modeled what is mean to be in God's kingdom. I'm going to skip some of this. Paul's goal was to model Christ so perfectly that people would be drawn to God's kingdom. Life is a joining that offers many pathways. God wants us to choose willingly his pathway. Walk in a joy. Walk with joy. Walk with dignity. Walk with, with, with God's strength. Okay? And the matter that reflects Christ worthy. Let's present Christ worthy. Let's be good representative of him in the gospel. Use the Bible. Read your Bible and pray. It is to sin. It is to this end that we have been personally invited. God has called us. He set us apart. All you can listen to this later. Listen. Get into this and understand to take part in God's kingdom and his glory. The God who spoke on all creation miraculously appeared out of nothing. That God before whom everyone shall bow. That God has dominion over every government and kingdom, ex spiritually and earthly. He's invited us to participate in his will and work among the nation. God's calling you. He's calling you to work while doing so. He promises that he will, listen, he will taste his majesty and splendor here and now. 
How can we not involve God's work in this world? What he said is God going to take care of us. He's going to provide our need. He do everything for us. But you got to be willing to take part in it. Okay? Work. I'm getting to the end now. Work. This would say works in the kingdom. Hebrews 12 and 28. Read that. If we truly love God and stand in awe of him and understand the magnificent kingdom gift we have received without any, without any deservedness or our part. We didn't do nothing. God's grace and mercy allow us to be here. Many of us alive today. Many going on in COVID and died. You know, thousands of people died. But it's God's grace that we here. You know, don't think it because you. it's God's grace. We will have a deep desire and drive to share that news with others and lead them to the same givers of gifts who have encountered us. Okay? God's kingdom is built from lively stones. First Peter 2 and 5. Not passive stones. As the stone in Daniel 2 and 34 was active. Read that. Very interesting. They were active stones. We should be dynamic part of the kingdom that cannot be shaken and will last for eternity. In the end, I'm going to include. You know, there were some great men. They had great this. They said the title is great. Everybody want to be great today. Everybody want to do something great. You know, they had what? Alexander the Great. Charles the Great. Frederica the Great. But the greatest is God the Great. Okay? We need to fix the kingdom of God. Should not end. Christ is the greatest. And he's like a star eternally fixing in the heavens to light man paths and continually going on. God is willing. If we want to know what God is doing, come, my guest, come. If we want to know, if we want to know, um, if we want to know what God is doing, to do in the future, we should look at what he has done in the past. Go into the Old Testament. Look what he's done in the past, okay? God is and has always been active in the world. Okay, bringing about his will. Okay, we have been chosen and called to be part of his will. If we don't participate, God will rise up, raise up other nations and do, have others do what he called us to do. Let us not squander. Our invitation is from the king. God sent us, the king invited you. So if you don't know Jesus, your personal savior right now, I come there, God, ABC, accept Jesus, acknowledge God, believe Okay, believe he is God and believe in your heart that he, Jesus, came and confessed, repent, ask Jesus right now. Say, come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me of my sin, Lord. Lord, I want to be a part of this kingdom. I want to know you more. I want to see you, Lord. Help me, dear God, to do good. I come in the name of Jesus right now asking you. I'm challenging you. If you take this word of God and if you read God's word and you pray the sinner's prayer, and repent of your sins. Just say, Jesus, I love you. I want to do better. I want to come into your kingdom when you die. God heard you. And all you got to do is tell someone. Read your Bible. Let someone know. Go to a church and stay in war with God's word. And he will help you. Believe you me, he will. He loves you and care for you. Thanks again for joining. God bless you.